Welcome back to Block TV. We're at Block Show Asia 2019 here in Singapore. Everything's going off. There's conferences, meetings galore. It's fantastic what's going on here. The energy is exciting. And I'm joined now by Jim Dolbert, uh, head of the Elixir and Praxis projects. Uh, Jim, thank you so much for being with us. No, no, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, love having you here. Uh, so I understand you guys have a nice big announcement, a big juicy taste of something fresh for us you uh, want to give out. So uh, what can you tell us about yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, last week we were in Lisbon at uh, Web Summit, which is a big sort of general technology show. Uh, and we released uh, a test messenger, which we called XX Messenger. And it's a, it's a messenger that's supported by our privacy protecting platform. So when you use it, um, all your metadata is, is protected. No one knows who, who the sender and receiver of messages are. And, uh, and we did that because we wanted to have a reference implementation so people could see how the platform works, the early community members. And so we released with it, uh, we call it the dashboard, but it's a real-time diagnostic on how the, the platform is performing. And we have nodes running uh, on four different continents, third-party nodes. It's part of our, we call it a public alpha implementation. And then, you know, we came here to Singapore at Block Show, and uh, we just announced uh, our, an XX coin for, uh, yeah, for the members of our community to kind of participate. And, uh, and the way we're dealing with that is we have an app it's the XX Collective, and it's at xxcollective.io, and people will download that app, and they can easily track us, uh, use the messenger, and then you know get access to the coin itself. So it's a big deal for us because we've been working hard, you know, for a number of years. We were in stealth, and uh, and so it's a big sort of landmark, you know, milestone, and it lets people kind of get involved more actively. Right, yeah, community is such a big part of this uh, whole sphere. It's important to get those guys on side. No, it really is. And what happened to us is funny. We were in Singapore maybe uh, 15 months ago, and, and we came out of stealth on Elixir, which is the privacy protecting platform. We had a big article in the Wall Street Journal, and, um, and people were sort of like, where's your coin? Or like, you know, where's the coin? And, and we, we said, you know, we started with the privacy protecting platform, and, uh, you know, we're not there yet. And so uh, what happened was that, um, you know, we had a separate team working in stealth, and we call it Praxis. Both the Elixir and Praxis have our XX uh, sort of graphic or logo, and uh, and they, you know, are developing and, and designed a, a, a consensus solution uh, and a digital currency. And the the distinctive features of it are is that the consensus solution uh, reaches finality in one round, which means we can support a payment system that that clears in about 10 seconds. And, um, and the consensus system is designed to support the selection of nodes to run the privacy platform. So it, it, uh, it secures the privacy as well. And the, uh, we took as a goal, and because of David Chom's real leadership on this, you know, he basically said, we've got to future-proof this thing because quantum computing is coming. And he said that way before the recent announcement from Google. So uh, the way the Praxis team did it uh, is they use, you know, basically just large random numbers, hashes, um, the most sort of reliable, coarse sort of like, you know, strong crypto. Uh, so we're pretty proud of the fact that as a digital currency on its own, it's, it's a strong and um, pretty impressive, a quantum secure digital currency. It's, it's a pretty amazing element to, to try and future-proof uh, you, you know, your cryptocurrency, to think about that in that future context. What, what sort of led you to that, uh, that way of thinking? Well, I think, you know, what David is, um, there's something called the Crypto Wars. And uh, in 1982, uh, the U.S. government sent letters to uh, all the degreed and anyone who was sort of known as a cryptographer in the United States. And the letter basically said something like, don't ever meet publicly or talk about cryptography. If you do, you know, you will not have children, you'll never own a house, you'll be, it was, it, you know, threats, legal threats. And so what David did is he held a, he said, I think I need to hold a conference. <laughs> this is a true story. So basically he, um, he sent out hand uh, written letters and invited uh, uh, everyone who he knew, and it was about 100 people around the United States in particular, uh, to come to the University of uh, California at Santa Barbara, UCSB, and um, charged everyone 100 bucks for the conference fees. And so when he got there, he was doing the, the sort of like uh, chair address, and there were all these guys in black suits from Laurel, Maryland, which is where the CIA is. 
and he looked at all of them and he said, you know, congratulations, you're now charter members of a new international association. It's called the International Association of Cryptological Research. It's legally protected as an international resource organization by the United Nations, and you guys are members. And they were like, and that's really was the first real win. So what that did was it established the fact that uh, academics and cryptographers could meet on their own without being dominated and controlled by the U.S. government. So, so David had seen this stuff coming, and he knew, uh, you know, there there are nation-state actors, there are national labs in the United States, but at any, you know, China, uh, but all the large, if there are, if there are people who know math there's likely to be a sort of government-sponsored clandestine national lab working on this stuff. Um, and it was his judgment that, you know, stuff was coming soon. So the Google thing was really kind of uh, just a confirmation that it's sometime in the relevant time frame we're going to have this issue. So, and then just looking forward, I mean, I know it's hard, you know, you've just uh, announced this sort of alpha uh, sort of testnet uh, situation that, you, that you've got going on, but where to from here? What's the sort of timeline and roadmap looking forward? Yeah, yeah, so basically what, what's happening now is we're proving out the efficiency of the platform, um, but we have a limited number of nodes. And so the way consensus works for us, and, you know, it's sort of generally too, true in many of the blockchain implementations is um, it's critically important that our teams of nodes be chosen in a random fashion, a true random fashion, uh, and the way we reach consensus and establish finality, uh, that that not be centrally controlled. That's the whole point. So at beta, which is coming next year, we're going to hundreds of nodes, and we're starting to implement that solution. Right now, uh, we're running the mix, and we're proving out the transaction processing speed, but we don't have a fully decentralized consensus solution in place. So that's the next step for us. Sounds like uh, an exciting development. Good to see you guys out of stealth and getting out there. Jim Dolbear, I want to thank you so much for speaking with us and uh, letting That's us great. know a little bit about what's happening. Thank you very much. And in the meantime, stay with us at blocktv.com for all the latest on Block Show Asia 2019. I'm Asha Westrop Evans. Thanks for watching. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.